Hey, y'all. Hey. Good morning. Happy Monday to you, you, and especially you. Today is Monday, March the 18th. Do y'all know that today is the last day of winter? <sighs> Woo! <sighs> Goodbye, winter. <laughs> What's the high today? 47? What's the high? Yeah, Alexa, what's the high today? She may not be talking to me right now. Good morning, Shonda. Today, expect a high of 44 degrees Fahrenheit. 44. The high is 44. Oh, fix it, Jesus. We're going to be all right. We just got this one last day. And for all of y'all that's saying that, you know, we could still get some winter weather, I rebuke that. Tomorrow's the first day of spring, so we receive that. Good morning. My name is Minister Shonda Tucker. And this handsome man beside me is my husband. <laughs> What's your name? I don't know. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Al T Minister Al Tucker. How y'all the lovely people doing this morning? Y'all come on on, because we're going to try to get, get in and get out. So every Monday morning, we get to lead the body of Christ in corporate prayer. We get to do that because of our amazing church family, Pursuit for His Presence Ministries, that is under the leadership of our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. So we give honor to them. We absolutely love them, and we thank God for this opportunity to be used for the glory of God. So uh, corporate prayer um, is basically just us coming together to set the tone for your day and for your week. Listen, um, there was a study many years ago that most people have um, heart attacks and high anxiety on... <laughs> on I love it, it's live. On Mondays, because of the stress of starting your work week and you think about everything you got to do or whatever's going on with the kids or whatever's going on in your family. Um, and so we, uh, many, many, many years ago, decided to do uh, Monday morning prayer. And so that's what this is and that's what you're watching. So basically, we would just want to come on here and give you a quick word, love on you real good, pray over you so that your week and your day starts off bathed in prayer. You know how you tie the tenth of your money, you give the first of your money. So this is setting aside some time, the first um, first part of your work week, just to be able to spend some time with the Lord. And so we absolutely love it. Um, every third Monday, the Lord said, um, would be Men's Monday, right? So. Um, this handsome man is in charge. You want to tell him what you did um, Saturday? Oh, you. Oh, wait. Uh, announcements. Wednesday, Bible study at six thirty. Uh, surprise! It's probably going to be me <laughs> here Wednesday at six thirty because. Someone has decided to do Bible study, but they're trying to hide behind they got to work. You know what I'm saying? Because he's going to be in the, in the AT wheel, so he's saying he can't do Bible study. But whatever. Whatever, Tuck. But yeah, so it'll be me Wednesday at 6.30. Um, and then on Saturday is 10 a.m. prayer. It is corporate prayer again, but it's on um, a conference call. It is led by uh, Minister Kimberly Martin, and it is a time of just amazing uh, prayer. And so all this month, we have been praying an extended amount of time in our prayer language, praying in the Holy Spirit. And so that's just, uh, it usually runs about... I say 30 minutes, but right now we average about 45 minutes to an hour. But if you got to jump on, jump off, it's no big deal. Um, that is every Saturday morning at 10? 10. 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the number and all of that, we can get that to you if you need it. Um, any yeah. other announcements? Easter egg hunt, where's your cheese? That Easter egg hunt is about to worry you. Yeah. I'm surprised General that you keep Hunter. remembering it. Jump they have an Easter egg hunt for the children. <laughs> <laughs> they can invite people too. 
The sad. You have to know how many people are coming. They have to register. Mm -hmm. He excited about Easter time. Huh? Uh, and praise dances on uh, Easter, right? Okay, so Easter egg hunt Saturday before, Resurrection Sunday. Of course, we're having a Resurrection Sunday service. Um, the address for the church, 806 Meadow Lark Lane in Goodlesville, Tennessee. We have service every Sunday at 10 a.m., so we would love to have you just pop up and come be with us. We're super excited about Joan Hunter. If you don't know who she is, just put in joanhunter.com org to look at her website she is a phenomenal woman of god um her mantle is healing and she is whew, she's amazing so joan j-o-a-n hunter h-u-n-t-e-r is coming to our church may 17th and 18th for services so uh, just go ahead and circle that on your calendar that you want to be in Goodlesville, Tennessee on May the 17th and 18th. She is leaving right after that, headed to Africa. So what an awesome opportunity that we get to pray over her and pray with her before she journeys uh, to Africa. But she is a phenomenal woman of God and we are super excited. God connected our ministry with hers really early on and it has been just a phenomenal blessing. So... Yay. Um, anything else? Okay. Um, so Saturday, what happened? Since today is Men's Monday, we just gonna let the, let the man of the house do his thing. Good morning again. Okay, Saturday, we had, a, um, we had our first annual <laughs> um, me and prayer breakfast. You know, it went very well. I mean, I wish we had more men would came out, but we had, we had a good time. We ate good. Was... Um, our pastor is on here. She said Joan Hunter uh, specializes in healing and financial miracles. One more time for the people in the back. She specializes, <laughs> her mantle is healing and financial miracles. She is the person who taught me personally about uh, scriptural giving, yeah. healing, finances, May 17th and 18th. Okay, I don't want no excuses when we over here like, <laughs> and you wonder what happened. It was because we tried to tell you May 17th and 18th. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Um, like the third morning, we had um, me as prayer brother. I mean, it, it, it was great. I think it went around went very well. That's how I wish more men have been there. But when we have it again, we're going to announce it for y'all come on out. You know, just time for me to get together, fellowship a little bit, eat, eat good, give me spiritual food. Because um, we had some, I some good topics. We had um, Pastor Kevin came with um, Identity in Christ. Brother, Brother Minister, uh, Minister Tony came with, um, uh, with, um, mm. Praying in spirit. Praying in spirit. La, 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 la. And myself la, 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 la. Um, did one on, I spoke on accounting, uh, on, on accountability, I'm sorry, on accountability. Then um, yesterday we had some very good word by my lovely wife here on, um, on, the Lord. on me. And she come with three points that, oh, <laughs> it was kind of funny in the crowd yesterday. <laughs> But well, three points: we got um, honor, honor him with your body, no, honor, honor him with worship, honor him with your body, and honor him with your wealth. I paid attention. So um, we had a good service yesterday, and now this, this morning we got look, we back on the men again. So not on the men, because all y'all women, we all just need to hear the word. So, but third, this is on third Monday, supposed to be a men's Monday, but I think more women don't hear the men this morning, but we we still can go for. And um, actually, what we talked about this morning is um, getting out your own way. Mm. I can't say speak for every man, but I'm gonna speak for myself. You know, sometimes you know we just sometimes I just don't. Oh, sucks. They want to go down on. Oh, that that's your stuff, Poppy. <laughs> okay. Um, that's your <laughs> okay. Sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, those of y'all who know Apple iPhone, stretch your hand towards this one because him and his joy be doing that. <laughs> okay, and then we're back on both. 
All right. Um, first of all, we were talking about get out our own way. I guess it's going back to my seven. Sometimes you know, I just sometimes I get in my own way. They're doing the stuff the Lord want me to do. I, first thing we need to do is overthink. Stop. You no, know, overthink the process. So, first thing we need to do is just stop overthinking. You know, stop trying to make it reason, make it sound, make it feel. Make, um, I was having a good brief say this. Make it um, sensible. Because, you know, God is a supernatural. So sometimes we, when you try to do things that like, you try to rationalize, have and work out, stop. Stop. I do it. So I'm just telling y'all, y'all need to stop just because I need to stop too. And when I, when I stop thinking about what God telling me to do. Just go move forth and do it. Anything else on that, babe? Yes. No, um, one of the things that our pastor was saying yesterday um, was that your mind is for making decisions, right? But faith and the believing is from your spirit man. So when God gives you something, God is a spirit. The word says he's a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He's not speaking it to your mind to see what your mind thinks about it and can your mind make a decision about it. He's speaking it to your spirit man and your spirit man grabs it and receives it as truth. Then it bubbles up to your mind. So if, if you receive it with your mind first, your mind is thinking, well, how is that going to happen? Well, what? It, Okay, well, what does that have to do? I'm praying about this and you speaking about this. So we having this whole conversation with God like he doesn't know what he's talking about. Instead of not receiving it with head knowledge, receiving it with your spirit man so that I'm not thinking myself out of a blessing, right? Because the things that his thoughts are higher than my thoughts. His ways are higher than my ways. So when he speaks something to me, even though I don't understand with my mind, my spirit man needs to receive it as truth. And then we can we can come let us reason together later. But let me receive it as truth. Um, I love when, when, when the angel of the Lord came to Mary and said, look, you're going to have a child and this, this child is going to be this and be that. And she said, she asked a question, how could this be? But then she said, be it unto me. Be it unto me. That's kind of got to be our response when the Lord says, hey, I want to bless you. I'm going to use you in a mighty way. I'm going to use you to do this and so. Be it unto me. We're going to get the details later. But yes, I received the thing that you're trying to do in my life. But a lot of times we, we instantly go to, for, my, for me, I instantly go to the financial aspect. What? Who? What? Uh. Going to do what now? <laughs> That's my mind. I'm, I'm going to that as if he doesn't have cattle on a thousand hills, as if the streets of heaven are not paved in gold, as if he didn't have any money in heaven. He has released it down here. So what I need is already in the earth realm. I just have to be obedient to bring it in, right? So, so thinking your way through it and trying to figure out, just receive it. Receive with it's so awesome that God even takes the time to speak to us, to declare things over us, to tell us a glimpse of what's coming, so that we stay focused on what He said and not what we see. Let, let me stop for a second. Over your message, you good. You already count. You already took care of all my points. <laughs> Actually, no. It was first one you know, for far as getting out of your own way. But first one you know, to start with thing the process because. We, we have a chance to do that. We want to rationalize how it will work out and everything. If we knew how, if, if we knew everything, we wouldn't need God. Mm. I mean, <laughs> so when God tells you to do something, just try to, like my wife always, she came, we first got married, she heard, she always talked about being reckless o obedient. Mm -hmm. You know, I try to be, <laughs> don't have them all the time, but you know, <laughs> I do try to be. Well, I said, but most time I'm, 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 I'm get, I get in my own way. I get, in, I get, I want to, I want to rationalize. I want to think, well, how, well, how this can work? I mean, God, you want me to do this, but how? I, 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 I can't see, I can't see the end. Of it. So I mean, I know, mm. so I like, oh, I don't know about that, but you got to trust God. And that's the second point. You got to believe God. You got to trust God. You got to trust God because He is trustworthy. He is faithful. God has, God has never let us down. Amen. He has never let us down, even though. We in out all the time 
Even he also we do. I thought I basically did. I, I said it, you know. Well, no, that worked out no pretty good. I mean, let's say, <laughs> he has never let me down. And, but I still, even now, even with the age I am now, sometimes I still want to rationalize. I still want to not give him, I mean, not trust him in anything, but, I have, I, but I'm but i quick to learn that yeah, you need to stop. You just need to stop because you ain't, all I'm doing wasting time. All I'm doing wasting forever time that, he, that I could be doing something else for the, for the Lord. Well, I'm sitting here trying to think about why I need to do this and why I don't need to do it. And I don't know if I want to do that yet, but that's just me. I don't know how y'all do it. <laughs> that's just me. But yeah, you just believe, believe God, believe God's word. God has worked been waiting over 2,000 or 2,000 some years now. And he actually, he has never let me down with anything. What you got? Amen. Trust him because he's trustworthy. I, I think that uh, even when we're not, he's faithful even when we're not. So trusting God, I have no reason not to trust him. I, I may be concerned. I, I, I tell uh, some of my mentees, even if you got to do it scared, even if you got to take the first step in fear, just do what he says. You can trust him because he's trustworthy. The truth is we're already out here in the middle of the ocean <laughs> um, because we've been trusting him. So why not trust him now? Um, he's faithful. And, and I don't have to tell you how he's been faithful in your life. You already know. So when he's telling you to do something, his intentions towards you are good. It's not for your evil. The word of God says in Jeremiah 29 and 11 that he knows the plans that he has for you, plans to prosper you and to give you a future and a hope. So you can trust God even when you don't understand, even when you can't figure out where he's going. Well, why you want me to do this? I'm still doing it. Um, like Hubby said, uh, he gave me that term early on in our relationship to be recklessly obedient, um, to just step out on faith because my heart um, was concerned about getting into another relationship and definitely was not um, overly excited about considering marriage. But the Lord kept saying, I need you to be recklessly obedient to me. Whatever you hear me saying to do, I need you to do it. And so, um, and there was a blessing associated with it. So um, many blessings associated with it. So sometimes you just got to do it. Do it scared. He didn't give us the spirit of fear, but your knees may be knocking and, <laughs> and, and he looking sweating and, and a little concerned. Like, Lord, you really want me to do this? Because he always gives you something that's bigger than you, bigger than your vision, bigger than what you think you can do. But once you do it, you're like, wow, God, that was awesome. So just do it. Just do it. Be recklessly obedient. And the term recklessly obedient means the moment from the moment I hear him say something to the moment I start moving in that direction. I want that that pause to be as little as possible, almost non-existent, that I hear it and go. That I don't hear it and sit with it and hear it and ask somebody what they think about it and ask them that they hear it. I hear the voice of the Lord. I confirm that it's him. And then I move in the direction of doing what he says. That is recklessly obedient um, in, in my definition. So, Amen. Um, moving on to the last point was, you know, it, 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 she always says, I do we'll have faith. But I want to just think we we'll go back to the thing. Because the thing we did on Saturday, you know, we... Like Pascal spoke on having a, um, a, a, your, your identity in Christ. Then we talked about um, accountability and um, speaking and talking and uh, speaking and you know, speaking in your prayer language. And all those things, you know, just, we had to have faith to do it. We had to have faith because once you learn about Jesus, then you have your identity. You get your identity in Christ. That's just the first step. Mm -hmm. You still got to continue to move forward. You got to. Then you got to come in and just start trusting God. Then you got to have faith to move where God tells you to move. Because actually, we, yesterday morning was all we was all we had to get to. They're talking about Gideon. You know, how Gideon, how God came to Gideon. And Gideon was, you know, he thought he was the lowest one in his family, everything. Like, God, why are you choosing me? I mean, he, when he called me, I think when he went to Gideon, Gideon was hiding in and, and, and then um, doing this, what do you call it, threshing the wheat or something. <laughs> And, and he, you know, he was in, the, in, in, in by himself doing it, you know, trying to, for no people, for nobody wants to see him doing it. You know, and God called him forth to get him, want you to go and um, bid his honor. So they started over, don't have him to start over, but under the first, first, you know, God weed him out. And um, then he got down, 
Tom, I forgot what the number was, but there was still too many guys. There was still too many. So he even went down. He told him to go down to the, to the um, river. And depending on how they drunk the water, God went on to weed them out. I think it was like 300 men. So he went with Gideon, you know, went with 300 men to go defeat the armors. And so in Rashavah, he know, he 300 going against tens of thousands. Man, you get you get what you get, and, <laughs> that's that's what I, that's our way of thinking. But but God, you know, He did it for the reason because He want you to have faith. He said, "I want you to see that when I want the world to see that I'm doing this and not you." So this the only thing with God has put all of us in different different scenarios that we just had to have faith that it would happen. Even marry my wife, I had to have faith that <laughs> in God as God. I said, this is a big step for me. I was like, I, was, I called myself, I, I, I'm living comfortably. I thought, I said, I ain't won't worry about nothing. I, and it makes me, I thought, I told her, I, told her, I know I told her many times, I never thought we'd move to Tennessee. I said, that one, I, that, that's, that one plan at all. Clear that, that one, up, clear that up. That, Did that, I ask you to move to Tennessee? No, you, know you didn't. Oh, I said, okay. but, but, I, I <laughs> but I still had that, had that faith that with God, you leave, you, you tell me to do this thing, so. I had to have faith and, and, and move when he told me to move. But, you know, it it, it, it worked out real good for me, I must say. I love my dear wife. But, yeah, we got to have faith. But even with, you go back to any story in the, in the Bible, even back in the Old Testament with Abraham, when, when he told Abraham to go sacrifice his son, Abraham had to have faith that, 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 that God knew what he was doing. And Abraham was good because I'm like, I don't know, this, it, it, it took you a hundred Took you took you took you hundred years to give my son and go and sacrifice him, mm. but he 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 went and did it. He went he he got everything going like we going to do the sacrifice. But in the end, God, you know, he proved faithful to God. So God, you know, had to ram in the bush for him. So nothing to do on today. Just have faith in God. Just do what God wants you to do. And um, sometimes you do have to have people in your corner to help build you up in there, because even. I mean, mm -hmm. I got sometimes look, maybe I need you to help me pray on some things, and um, sometimes my faith might be wavering a little bit. So, but I got to have, have have good accountability partners. Like I got my wife, but plus I got you know got my got my guys like Pastor Kevin, Big Big Tone, all those. You know, I hit eight, eight. I need y'all staying with me on some things. Let's just pray on these things. But um, I thank God for all of them. But like I said, we just got to have faith in God, have faith and move when He said to us to move. <laughs> I got nothing. Um, I'm I'm wondering why our internet is is behaving the way that it is. So who knows? Um, but anyway, um, the subject today is to get out of your own way, to have faith in God, to trust Him, that His thoughts are greater than our thoughts, and so. That's what we're going to do. So whatever it is that he's telling you to do, I promise you, don't don't think your way out of a blessing. Be obedient to what it is that he's got you doing. Wow, Dr. Virginia, where's that? Okay. Um, you want to pray? Thank you so much. But congratulations to the men. They had a phenomenal time. They uh, we saw a little snippet of the of the uh, intro videos for Pastor Kevin and Hubby and and Minister Tony Wright. And I said, "Oh, y'all put it on a conference conference. It was awesome." So shout out to the men. We lo we love um, the men of pursuit, and we're so proud of them and the things that they're doing. And God is using them in a mighty way. And so it's just good to see. Um, men just standing up and taking their positions and loving their their families and and loving God and and doing so in front of the children so that they can see examples of godly men. Um, so uh, we're super proud of them and just thankful for everything that God is doing. But listen, we're gonna pray real quick and let you get back to your day and back to your week. Amen. Um, I just hear the Lord saying to pray about the decisions that you have to make this week, that he would order your steps, that you would not rule out his voice, that what he's telling you to do, it might not make sense to your mind, but he knows, he knows what you need. So just do what he's saying. Okay. Amen. Just, you know, just, just, just get out your own way. Cause you know, we, we sometimes we are like, our own words anyway. So just give, just, just the Lord to you move, move. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds 
It's a fact. You know, it, it, sometimes it just don't sound right, though. But, but, but yeah, when the God tell you to move, just move. Because, like I said, all we're doing is hindering ourselves, hindering ourselves from from God's blessing. That's, that's, that's what we're doing. We just, we just take the long way around. But some, some of us, we know, we don't. If God, God still, well, God's plan still will end up being being done. And regardless how long you take, it still it still will come to fruition. So just like if we just start with your time, get on our own way, get on our own heads, and just move each other smooth. Have faith. Okay. Say we go for the shit and Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you, dear Lord. Just thank you for this opportunity. Just speak to your people, Father God. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Father God. Thank you for good night rest last night, Father God. Just thank you for who you are in our lives, Father God. Thank you for all we've been to hear of our lives, Father God. Father God, just thank you for the, what you already blessed us with, Father God. And we're going to just thank you in advance for the minimal blessing you have for us, Father God. But Father God, on this day, Father God, we just want to welcome you into our day, Father God, to give us guidance, give direction, Father God, because we can't do this alone, Father God. Yes. And Father God, just continue to spare with us, Father God. Father God, give us the, just give us the opportunity just to get on our own way, Father God. Just just be reckless with being what you want us to yes. do, Father God. Have faith in what you want us to do, Father God. Just trust you, Father God. Father God, just continue to take this heart of stone and turn it to a heart of flesh, Father God. We can be more simple to what you want us to do, Father God. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, we have anything hindering us from doing your will, Father God, we just lay it on the altar right now in Jesus' mighty name, Father God. Without you, we will free up, dear Lord. So, Father God, anything that's hindering us, Father God, any kind of unforgiveness, Father God, any kind of bitterness we may have toward our fellow man or woman, Father God, just take it all away from us right now in, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Any sin we're not giving you, Father God, we just lay it on the altar right now in Jesus' mighty name, Father God. Father God, let us continue to walk worthy of the calling upon our lives, Father God. And let everything we do just glorify you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, we walk each and every day, Father God. Just give the unconditional love that we need to show this dying world, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for all you're doing, Father God. Thank you for just building us up in your word, Father God. Thank you for molding us to, to the men and, women, men and women of God you need us to be, Father God. And Father God, I just thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary Cross for all our sins, Father God. Father God, right now in the name of you, let us just, just be obedient, Father God. Be obedient to your word, Father God. And just thank you for that word, Father God. Thank you for all you're doing in our lives, what you're about to do in the mighty name of Jesus, dear Lord. Father, we thank you for everything that you're doing in us, for us, and through us. God, I just decree and declare that you're setting before us open doors that no man can close, and you're closing doors that no man can open. God, I thank you, Father God, that we have the mind of Christ, God, that we have a kingdom perspective, the ability to see an old problem in a new way. I thank you for downloading into us wisdom and discernment, God. I thank you for going ahead of us and making a crooked path straight, God. I thank you, Father God, for giving us supernatural favor with you and with man. God, forgive us for our sins, creating us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. God, we want everything it is that you have for us, God. Father God, help us to be open to what you want to do in us, for us, and through us. God, I just hear you saying that you have great things, that you have great things prepared for us. And so, Father God, help us to walk worthy of the calling that you placed upon our lives. Thank you, Father God, for letting us be living epistles, written examples of your goodness and of your grace and of your mercy. God, let us keep our focus on you, not focused on bills, not focused on situations, not focused on people, not focused on things that are not of you, God, but to keep our focus on you. God, your word declares looking unto you, the author and the finisher of of our faith. Yes. God, continue to order our steps because your word declares that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God, lead, direct, and guide us. You are the good shepherd and we are your sheep, God. Your word declares that my sheep know my voice. So I thank you, Father God, for continuing to speak to us, God. Continue to give us revelation knowledge, God. 
continuing father god to provide for our daily needs god you said that you would meet every one of our needs according to your riches and glory so i thank you god even now for blessing us to be a blessing not because we're so good god but only because you are so good god we pray for our nation god that you would truly heal our land that we would be one nation under god i pray father god for our leaders god i pray for every government leader god i pray for every church leader god i pray for every head of house also, God, I just pray that you give them wisdom and discernment that they know what to do and how to do it, God, that all of their ways are pleasing unto you, God. God, we thank you for the opportunity to come together to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, God, because your word declares that iron sharpens iron. So, God, we're excited, God, that even as we walk out of this season of winter into spring, God, I'm reminded of your word that declares, I am doing a new thing. Now it's spring springs forth. So I thank you, Father God, that we're springing over into blessings, springing over into favor, springing over into newness. God, I thank you for blessing us that old things are passing away and all things are becoming new. God, we honor those who to honor is due. God, we just ask that you just create in us, Father God, an atmosphere of worship, God, that we worship you when fear comes, that we worship you when doubt comes, that we stop and worship you. God, when worry comes, that we stop and worship you, God, that we worship you and that we honor you in everything that we say and everything that we do. God, your word declares that we're to be ready to give an answer for the hope that is within us. God, you are our hope and the joy of the Lord is our strength. Continue to heal us physically, mentally, spiritually, in every way. I decree and declare that we lack nothing because Jehovah Jireh is our provider. We have exactly what we need, exactly when we need it. God, we thank you for this opportunity to pray. Now, God, this prayer isn't perfect, but your love for us is. So whatever it is that should be mentioning, whatever it is we should be holding up before you, we decree and declare that it's done and it is done well. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you're looking for an opportunity to sow, Pursuit for His Presence Ministries is good ground to sow into, not because we desire a gift, but we desire fruit that may abound on your account. We give honor again to our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. We give honor to our church family, Pursuit for His Presence Ministries. We give honor to our overseer, Dr. Cesar Richburg, and the entire first family, the Richburg family. And we give honor to Mother Blanton. We give honor to our co-laborers in Christ, and we give honor to each of you. You're not watching this by accident or by coincidence, but God wants to remind you, look, get out of your own way and let God be God in every area of your life. Don't think yourself out of a blessing. Don't talk yourself out of a blessing, but do whatever it is that you hear him saying, and it is going to lead to a blessing. You have something else? I forgot, I forgot to give y'all a scripture reference this morning. <laughs> uh, this is Joshua 1 and 9. Um, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God with you wherever you go. In the mighty name of Jesus. Joshua 1 and 9. Okay, that's it. Good morning. All right. <laughs> We love y'all. Have a blessed day in the Lord. If there's something specific that we need to be praying about, feel free to put it in the comments. We're going to go back and pray over each of you. But if you need us to be praying about something, we're holding you up before the Lord and believing God for some great things in every area of your life. Listen, traveling mercies to all of you who are headed to Memphis this weekend for uh, uh Heroines of Jericho, uh, Palm Sunday service. Uh, so uh, don't meet me there, beat me there. I will be speaking on Sunday with permission from my pastors. So I'm super excited to see all of you again. Traveling grace and mercy, I'm excited to see you. Listen, you all have a wonderful week in the Lord. Tomorrow's the first day of spring, and God is going to let some things spring forward in Amen. your life. Okay? We love you. Bye.